Welcome back. I've got Ryan Coogler online. Robin, or excuse me, let me, I'll redo that. I don't know why I said Robin. Okay. Uh, look, that's yeah. right. Well, I'll, I'll three, two, one. Welcome back. I've got Ryan Coogler online. Ryan, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing this morning? I am awesome. Really looking forward to this conversation. So for those that don't know you, why don't you share a little bit about you and what you're doing, and then we'll dive into the conversation. Love it. Thank you. So I'm Ryan Coogler. I'm based here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I guess you can call me an entrepreneur, but I think at my age, we're done using that word. But uh, basically, I run and manage three different companies called Layered Company, where all the employees do the same job or post or function or task for all three companies. That's awesome. What And how did you come up with that concept? Because, you know, the, when I talk with different organizations, they all say, oh, we're, we're all different. But when I look at them and I get into the, the guts of the organization, it's like there's so many similarities for a variety of different businesses um, that you could actually have people work on multiple different things for different entities and still accomplish a lot of work and, and get things done. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say we're different, but I feel like if you have a marketing person and they're hired for marketing, they do marketing for one company. Why can't they do marketing for another? It also keeps them on their feet so they just don't have the same minutia and mundane job of just, you know, stamping something on a conveyor belt. So I have an event company, a marketing company, and a wholesale business. So if the marketing person or the ops person or finance, if they're paying bills for one company, just, okay, so now they're done with that. They paid the bills. Now they pay the bills for the next company. So that's just kind of my concept because you have a talent, you have someone who has an expertise, just spread the wealth, I guess you can say with the other companies. Because each company is busy, but it's not busy where it takes, you know, eight, nine hours a day, just that one company with marketing or with operations or logistics or, you know, new business affairs or whatever. I think too, uh, you know, marketing and event planning, you know, there's a lot of organizations that have or entities that have cycles that are busier than others. You know, accounting firms tend to be busy at the beginning of the year with audits and taxes and all that stuff. And then summer and fall is not as chaotic, you know, yes. events, depending on where you're conducting the events. If you're someplace like LA a year round, because the weather is fairly consistent. If you're in Minneapolis, well, then you're going to want to have people there maybe late spring, early fall. Other than that, they're, they're, they don't want to bring a shovel with them as a carry on on the plane for the attendees to come. They tend to like to go to warmer places. So there's cycles in all of that. And then of course, you know, with, you know, the logistics and the warehousing and things like that, you know, that kind of ebbs and flows with all kinds of different things. And obviously it's been, I'm sure, pretty interesting over the last few years with the pandemic and everything and navigating all of that as well. Yes. So with our event business, since you brought that up, we are nationwide. So we're everywhere from Hawaii to Boston. So yes, weather does play into it, but it seems like we're always busy. We're doing about 35, 40 events a year. So basically that's almost every week. We're somewhere, somehow, some way doing something. And we've done, I've done seven events in seven different cities in, in, in a week. So that's been fun too. So yes, it ebbs and flows. We get busy. And I have to say, you know, the person who kind of handles logistics for that does get a little itch their head a little bit like, oh, my God, wait, did I order bathrooms for this one, this one and this one? So that's maybe where my idea doesn't work and I need another person. But again, it's like you said in the start, it gets busy, but then it slows down five days later. I think, too, you know, once and the, you know, the more I think about this, the more it makes so much sense because you've got three different entities. And again, there's some similarities and there's some big differences as well. But what it allows that employee to do is expand their horizon when it comes to different things in understanding of, okay, for this, I need to do this. For this group, I need to do this. For this group, I need to do this. But it also gives you the opportunity of looking at efficiencies saying, never really would have thought to apply the type of preparation we do for events for, you know, the, this one, but it works or, you know, you basically take the best of all worlds and just kind of put it together and you get that flow going. And then you can seamlessly go, yes, I, I ordered bathrooms for this one. And we've got, you know, the, the all the vendors set up for this one and this one, we still are waiting for contracts on this one or, Oh, there's a strike at that location. Okay. Well, you know, what other venues do we have just in case it's not solved by the time we, we get there. 
So sounds like I sounds like I should hire you. You got the the lingo down. <laughs> you know how this works. <laughs> well, I've I've been in enough events and you know participated, you know, and and watched people that you know put them on and all of that. So you know, I'll I'll ask that you know troublesome question. Hey, how's it going? And right. you know they'll you know I guess it's maybe it's my therapist background. They'll just you know unload and like okay. So you know I just you know I'm I study things and go huh. It's like, all right, that's interesting that that's that. But I, I know those are just some of the things that come up last minute. And, you know, that's when you have a strong team that can be agile, they can, you know, pick up on things and, and run with it, no matter what the challenge is thrown at them. Yeah. And I found the latest challenges these days, and maybe your listeners say the same, is you have a little bit of a, you know, uh, I don't want to get too negative, but a PETA or entitlement that comes from customers. Um, where they just want more and expect more. So it's just, you know, something that we have to navigate more and we have to then have more tolerance and love for the customer to deal with that. And, you know, we blame it on the internet age, the, you know, the technology age, it makes everything easy. But when you're doing something logistically, it's not an app or, you know, you just can't order groceries on Amazon. It's like, well, hold on, the bathrooms are still coming. They'll be here. It's just, we have some physical delays of, you know, traffic or a flat tire or something of that sort. Or you, you know, we started the event earlier. So now we got to, navigate and try to get the bathrooms earlier yeah so. it's, there's been supply chain challenges and of course you know during the pandemic there were, all the rule books were tossed out and it was in a way kind of make it up as you went along and it yeah. was it was interesting to see and I, you know in event planning for sure that was one of those things where you know early days people were going oh, okay we've got to cancel and okay now we got to pivot to virtual how do we do that and i've said this a lot on my show I don't think companies and individuals have given themselves enough credit for how quickly they were able to adapt in a world that basically was shut down on us. And we were still able to function and hold events, do things, work, produce, create in a, a time that was really challenging. So I always tell people, it's like, I know it was not easy for any of us and it, it impacted so many of us in a variety of different ways commend yourself and celebrate yourself for being able to navigate through like i said challenging times that we hadn't seen in over you know 100 years plus 100 years ago was completely different world than it is now so yeah. uh it, a lot a lot i would say and of course i wasn't around that but i'm going to go out on a limb and say it was definitely harder to have to go through it what we had to go through this time than they did a hundred years ago of the nuances of work and life and transit and all that kind of good stuff. It, it really I, it caused I, I some problems. I completely agree during, obviously with our event business, we did pause it, hiatus it, put it on mall calls, whatever we, you know, it was constantly reschedule, reschedule. And then I finally just made the call and said, we're just canceling all events. We'll just look at this in six months, a year, whatever. And um, so we didn't do any events. Obviously we didn't even go virtual because we, you know, as, as your listeners, you know your talent, you know what you can do. And as an event company, we know how to handle things physically, which means logistically. So we know how to set up events. We didn't have the technology. We're not, I'm not code minded, so I can't set up a virtual platform. So we just stayed away from that. But my wholesale business, we supplied essential retailers with PPE, masks, gloves, all that stuff. So that went into play big time because we stayed open because we were supplying the retailers. So we were legally allowed to keep doing that. And so we pivoted, like you said, and we immediately went in a different, different direction and started wholesaling, distributing other products that were needed. And, you know, as far as I'm, you know, we, we probably saved lives with masks and all the stuff we gloves and all the stuff we just supplied. I mean, I have a stack of letters this big, emails from hospitals saying, oh, my God, thank you for donating the gloves and this and that. Because ironically, they just couldn't get it. It was just amazing. So anyway. Yeah, it was very difficult. I used to work in healthcare uh, years ago before the pandemic. Um, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that I wasn't working in it during the pandemic, but I know a lot of colleagues that still are. And uh, the, it was not easy to find things. It wasn't easy to work. You know, they, they were dealing with uh, a virus that was, you know, killing people left, right, and center. And they wanted to protect themselves because, especially in the early days, they didn't know. It's like, okay. How, you know, how bad is this? You know, what's going to happen? In yeah, they, they didn't know what's going on. 
no, it was like, here you go. You know, it's, we're going to drop you. It was kind of like, you know, getting dropped into an escape room and they didn't give you any instructions on how to get out of it. And it's like, okay, how am I going to navigate all of this? But they sure. did. And organizations like yours that, again, were naturally able to pivot and see an opportunity and address it uh, in a way that, you know, save lives is, is definitely something to commend yourself. And then of course, Things reopened, events started happening. There was obviously a a real hunger for people to get back out. Not not as much. I and I talked to a lot of people because I you know speak at events and whatnot. And there were people who were just like you know, quite frankly, I don't care what the curriculum was. I was just happy to go somewhere and yeah. be able to go out and be with people and be in an event again and and in and just experience that you know and. I, I think early on that was something that I noticed too in talking with people. They were just so happy to just physically be able to gather at a conference or an event and just yeah. see their peers. It was it, it, it was beautiful to watch. It's true. We our event business obviously picked up in 10x or 100x once you know things opened up and you know everybody did events and it was great. And you know, we're kind of plateaued back to a normal range. Um, but you know, our event company is, you know, expanded, you know, our niche is run charity runs and walks, you know, bringing great causes together. Uh, but we do a lot of other stuff. We just did this really cool event. Uh, all airports have to do a little fire drill, you know, a, a, a mocked up simulated plane crash. So we helped with that here locally in Los Angeles. So, you know, we're doing another sports day event for a conference. So we're all over the place and doing all sorts of different stuff. But now when I go to an event, it is back to normal. Everybody's back out and, you know, and it depends on the city you're in. Some are wearing masks, some are not all, you know, to each in his own. So we, we welcome and, and support anything that people want to do. Yeah, especially with LAX and the expansion going on. It's like, yeah, that is going to be, be an even bigger event because there's more terminals and everything else getting built in there. It's like Absolutely. that place, that place is gigantic. It, yeah. it, it just keeps getting bigger. And well, I, I tell people too, especially if they, not used to flying into LAX. And I said, well, if you're using Uber Lyft to get there, you know, depending on where you're staying, it won't take you long to get to the airport, to, but to get to actual... Where it drops places, you off to your where it drops off. Yeah, yeah it, I, I mean, I literally was 15 minutes away. Last time I flew into LAX, I was 15 minutes away from the airport. So 15-minute drive and 45 minutes in the Uber to get to the gate, uh, just because of traffic and cars and all of that good stuff. And it was early in the morning too, but that doesn't okay. matter. You know, L L a take, LA... take a, get a private car with LAX because they can go through the loop where yeah. yes, Uber, you know, ride share, whatever you have to go outside and go to another section. So, yep. but you know, in like two years, a year and a half, they're going to have the, you know, automated walkways all built, which is why it's kind of a mess right now. Um, it was funny, right? Right when the pandemic started, I went to the airport just to see how empty it was. And that's when they started building all the construction. And it was amazing. And to see it today, I was actually just there two days ago getting off a plane. It's just amazing what's been accomplished since March 13th of 2020. So. Yeah, I remember I was flying back from uh, Florida to Detroit uh, back as my uh, at the beginning of the pandemic or just before the pandemic, actually March 11th, uh, my father passed away. So my brother and I went down to Florida, packed up mom. Um, and packed up their house of 26 years and moved her back up to Michigan where she grew up and got all that. And then I flew back and I had a connecting flight. So I was flying back to Toronto. So I flew to Detroit and then I had a, a quick flight. Usually there's direct flights all the time, Detroit to Toronto. It's, you know, it's a popular business travel flight. So I love uh, that but, train in the Detroit airport. That's cool. The big red. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I, when I'm not feeling like walking, I'll hop on that thing. But it, it's cool. Yeah. But what I ended up doing is because of the pandemic, a lot of flights were getting canceled, so I had to fly to Chicago, and mm -hmm. then from Chicago to Toronto. So my flight from Detroit to Chicago, which I've taken that one before too, is usually a fairly full flight during the day. Uh, there were four people on the plane, excluding wow. the flight and flight or the crew and the attendants. Wow. The the flight from Chicago to Toronto, there were two passengers, myself and one other gentleman and the crew. So I get into Pearson Airport in Toronto, get through security, and I get to the luggage carousel area, which there are 20 carousels. It was dead silent in there. There wasn't oh, enough. Was, it, it looked like it was two in the morning, basically. Yeah, there was right. not, there was no one there. 
I saw my bag and the other guy's bag sitting on the side of the carousel. No carousels were moving. There wasn't a human being in there. It was easy just to go like this. I literally walked down, grabbed there, and I just kind of stood there and kind of looked around a little bit. And you could hear the HVAC system, which you never able to hear in there. Um, you could just hear the fans blowing, and you're looking around, going. And that was, you know, the, the I think it was the 23rd of March, and that's when I knew it's like, okay, this is something different. And then, of course, you know, we we know what happened, but it was just such a surreal time. And I think. It threw so many businesses off, and again, your business, you know, was able to pivot because you had multiple businesses. There yes. was a ton, ton of businesses that you know were a, a solo shop of doing one thing, and then they're like, "Nope, you can't do that at all." Um, so they were, you know, done. And yeah, was, and that's well, and that's to go back. That's you know, one. Of, I'm glad that I had multiple businesses running three businesses. Actually, not you know, not passively, physically running three businesses. Because, you know, I experienced a time in my life, I think 2008 recession, where it was like, hey, okay, I'm doing one job, one gig. Oh, I might not get a paycheck. And I'm like, that's not cool with me. So, hey, let me go juggle a few more balls and meaning more businesses. And then that way I'm assured a paycheck from at least one of the companies or at least something. And, you know, it, it helps. I mean, it's a, it's a drag on your mind. It's a drag on you physically. Um, but, you know, you, you, you go with it and it does pay off in the end. Yeah, diversification of income. Warren yes. Buffett tells us to do it, and and when it comes to you know work, it, it's definitely important, especially you know whenever there's any type of economic adjustment or downturn, and we you know see things going on, and it's been challenging ever since the pandemic for people, and you know depending on the industry and adjustments and AI and all these other things that are coming into a mix. There's yeah, people that are, you know, singular on one place um, is, is dangerous. Uh, and because you need to make sure you're getting some income from other places besides your job, or right. if you have a job, you know, multiple jobs, I know it's not fun, but uh, you know, it's not fun also not being able to pay your bills or eat. Um, that's not fun either. So I, you know, choose your fun and yes. I, it's just, it, being creative so where do you see things you know for your business over because obviously you've got three you're looking at different opportunities to expand tweak get into something different just curious as to you know what, what you see on the horizon for you and your company so to go backwards get into something different i'm always looking for yes another business to purchase or buy or be a part of but more passively on that one not be involved every day so i'm always looking at the, you know, the websites that have businesses for sale, is there something that I could just throw some money at and, you know, just go to a board meeting and be done? So yes, because I look for something to be in a different vertical. So all three businesses are in a different industry vertical. And I'm always like to diversify and be something else, just like any listener probably has a stock portfolio of this, this, and this. So it's the same thing. So I'm always looking for something new. <clears throat> I'm always looking for something different. I'm actively talking to two companies right now. Um, Two, where do I see the businesses going? I see the event business growing, obviously. Events events is something that is always going to be there. People always need events. So they always need some type of production. We're always looking to expand. We're doing that. Sure, I'll probably sell it in five, 10 years and be done with that. Because as a body gets older, meaning I get older, it's less like, you know, I'm going to forget something in an event one day. I'm just going to be honest because we just get forgetful as we get older. So, you know, the idea is obviously have a staff there, but eventually just give it to someone else and grow it because, you know, we have ongoing contracts. Uh, the marketing business, sure, always looking to grow that. We always, you know, we, we make high-end marketing material for people, by the way. That's what the marketing business is. And we do something different, which, you know, we're not just a, you know, we're not just SEO, you know, digital marketing. We actually print brochures that play a video screen, that have a video screen inside them and play a video when opening. So these are high-end marketing brochures called video brochures. So we print these overseas because it's electronics. And uh, so we're always, you know, we're expanding that. Our wholesale business, you know, we sell wholesale distributors, we, we, we sell the retailers. So we, we're technically in the liquidation closeout business. So we're buying end of life products. Um, that business is, I've been doing that the longest, 30, 35 years. Um, we started out selling movies, VHS videos, DVDs. And as we all know, that's gone because you can stream movies which is another reason that I do this and look for something else because every industry, every vertical, every business has its ups and downs. So you got to keep, you know, you got to keep tap dancing. You got to keep juggling. You got to keep doing other things. 
you can't just keep selling buggy whips because the guy that sold buggy whips is probably only selling 100 a year now. Or the guy that sold beepers. I mean, we all used to have beepers. That business is gone. So just like, you know, the wholesale business, I was doing movies and music to start, but now it's downloaded. So I had to expand and pivot quickly. And now I sell pretty much every product under the sun from phones to cameras to the headphones on your head, et cetera. So, so that's where I'm looking to take all businesses. Yeah, and it's really good to recognize that too. Is that, you know, your you. businesses are successful today, but you know they may not be down the road because hundred percent agree. Yeah, it, well, <laughs> you know, the stat that I love you know sharing is you know fifty two percent of the Fortune five hundred companies in the year two thousand have either been acquired or are out of business. The top five hundred, yeah, the top five hundred companies in the world, half of them are gone. Mm -hmm. in, in 23 years so everybody thinks oh it's going to be here and we we hear people talk all the time like oh we love this store we love this and all of a sudden yeah. you know gone and that can be from a small mom and pop restaurant that's been running for 40 years and the family's just like we're done you know we're yeah. not selling it we're, we sold the bu the building you know we got our money out of it you know, we got money saved we're done you know we don't want our name tarnished if somebody buys it and runs it into the ground we'd just rather just shut it down completely and someone else can do something else with the building and it's it, it's the right it is the right angle and the right viewpoint you have to have an exit plan because you know like i just mentioned with my event business in five years i know i'm going to be done i'm, I'm just going to be done so am i going to shut it down no i'll sell it to someone i'll give it to somebody something like that but I just know at that point, I will be like you just said, that restaurant owner that just you just you reach a certain point in your life where you just go, I'm done. I'm good. I had a good time. It was fun. Let's let's pivot. Let's do something else. Let me go make, you know, lawns or let me be a, you know, a gardener or a cook or something like that. And I think if you plan that out, your listeners, if they plan that out and go, hey, listen, I'm going to do this for so long, have an exit plan. Because there was actually a company I wanted to buy and I was talking to them and I said, great. So we're going to build it. We're going to do this. And then we'll sell it in five, 10 years. He goes, I'm never going to sell it. So I'm like, wait, so you want me to invest in a company, but you never want to sell it? No, never want to sell it. I'm like, I, you got to have some endpoint. Anyway. We all do. You know, yeah. we all, we all, you know, as grim as this sounds, we all have expiry dates and, you know, it's like, I'm never going to sell it. It's like, well, if you die, then, you know, what's the contingency plan, especially if, if you don't have children or yeah. your kids aren't interested in doing it or, you know, your spouse doesn't want anything to do with it. It's like, what do you do with it? It's like, well, better start planning that out now. So there's no surprises and headaches for everybody down the road. So Ryan, yeah, there's, the always, there's always like a cycle of life or a cycle of something. There's always a start of change and a stop so you got to just keep that in mind so exactly okay. love this conversation ryan where can people find out more about you and all this amazing work you're doing well thank you um so i i actually wrote a book called hard to stop how to start life um so every once in a while i get a, you know everyone has a little light bulb that goes off in their head so yeah. i wrote a book how to start life because you know these days a lot of people who are coming out of school and all that they don't know what to do they don't have the intention they don't know where to go so it's a little pamphlet it's on amazon you could just type in my name ryan kugler um on amazon or you could just go to ryankugler.com and it talks about my businesses it's got you know here go to events go to this go to that so that's the easiest way ryankugler.com k-u-g-l-e-r and uh there you go I'm, or when you you know put this online i'll share it with everybody and hopefully someone will find it and maybe it'll go viral because you and i rock there you go I'll definitely have all that in the show notes so ryan thanks again and thanks for the inspiration for you know going above and beyond and and taking on more than one initiative. I think the world would be better if more people did that. So thanks again for being on the show. Thank you.